Chanel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mental Nostalgic Runner. And we are back for another um, recap of episode of Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8. This is episode 16. And it's called Boiling Point. And this episode was kind of meh. It wasn't great. Um, and maybe because it was very Sharice focused and I don't really like her. I find her very boring and not interesting. So maybe that was why I was kind of bored with this episode. Because I'm not going to lie. For the most part, I was giving snooze fest this episode to me. Um, but I did see the preview for the following episode. And baby, I'm looking forward to that. That seems like that's going to be a whole entire thing. But at the same time, I, I hope I'm not the only one that feels this way. But I'm just like, when are they going to wrap this? <laughs> when are they going to wrap this up? Anyway, so without further ado, let's get into the recap. All right, sorry about that. Um, so we start the episode off um, with the ladies. All the ladies are back in Potomac, so they're finally, they're out of the DR. Uh, which, by the way, I actually enjoyed this group. This was one of the, um, I did enjoy their um, vacation with them going to the DR. Minus the fact that they still don't do things. They just, it seems like they go to, they drink, eat, Go to the beach. That's it. To me, that's kind of, that's given boring, but it's better than what the, what it's been before. But anyway, they're back in Potomac, and we see that Candace is headed to um, Kiara's um, wellness spa that she has. Kiana's is it Kiana or Kiara? Um, Kiana. It's Kiana. It's Kiana. Kiana, 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 Kiana. I'm trying to remember it and I apologize. But anyway, we they end up going to Kiana's Wellness Spa um, to get, and she's there to get her um, kitty cat um, hair removal through the ways of a lasering. <laughs> and um, then Wendy actually meets them as well and she gets like her underarms done. Um, so... As they're there, they're key king and um, Wendy, side note, Wendy's not in this episode much at all. This is pretty much the only time Wendy's in this episode. And she provides an update on what's going on with her talk show, which she is on YouTube now. And she actually did just put a new episode up, I think, today. Um, I've only seen the first two episodes. I do want to go back and watch all her episodes because there was an episode where she had Latavia from like Destiny's Child on it. I want to check that one out especially. But anyway, for those who haven't had a chance, definitely check her out. Um, but she's providing an update on her show. And she's saying that at the at this moment when, you know, this episode, she's saying that she's having trouble finding guests um, to be on her show. And she has plenty of connections because, you know, she's been, she's in the political arena. She also is in the academia um, area. But the problem is that most of her friends or connects either live in L.A. So she would have to fly out every time to go to do the show with people who are in L.A. Or for her political um, links or people that she knows through the political arena, a lot of them are already on other news outlets or shows. So there's she would be dealing with a non-competing clause. So... Um, Candace did suggest like, hey, how about you like maybe invite some people from like the academia world. And also too, you have plenty of other connections. I'm sure you'll figure it out. Which, fast forward, she has her show and she's figured it out. Um, so after that, they both get done with their lasers, the lasering. And they go to the front of um, the wellness um, spa to have some drinks. And... Um, Candace basically congrats um, Kiana for how well she handled the ladies while on vacation with them. And also both um, Candace and Wendy apologized to Kiana, to Kiana again because they did not, because Kiana still is like, yeah, y'all, y'all did not really check up on me as much as I would like you have to. And they, they own it. They're like, yeah, we, we didn't know that you were like as bad as what you were. Um, if we would have known that, we would have checked up on you. So, not a big deal. All is well there. And then um, they do end up talking about a little bit about the dynamics in the group um, because Keanu was a little shocked by that. 
and specifically what's going on between Candace and Robin, which, spoiler alert, it goes, this, this comes up again. <laughs> and and I'm, I'm tired, but <laughs> anyway. So Candace states that, so her energy this time around is a lot different than it was like at, in the DR. When she was in the DR, Candace very much looked like she still wanted to be friends with um, Robin but she's playing it cool. This time around, she states with Kiana, no, I've heard some more things that she's been saying and doing behind my back. And also she's using some very key words, um, you know, choice words, you know, defamation is very intentional. And side note, I think what we all keep forgetting this is still during the time when Candace has that lawsuit against the, um, she, you know, got sued by, you know, Ashley Darby's husband, Ill, AKA Michael, <laughs> um, a defamation suit. So I didn't think about it when, you know, um, when Robin mentioned it last week, but now when they replay that, I'm like, oh, oh, that was intentional. Okay. So we need to keep that in mind too. But anyway, that's where the thing ends So because Candace is basically saying, yeah, I'm not here for that. I'm going to, I'm going to be saying some, something about it, which she definitely does later on. Spoiler. <laughs> this next scene, it was a pretty emotional scene, but um, it, it still wasn't much to it for the most part, but it was emotional. Um, Giselle is helping Grace get packed up and um, heading and going to college. So this is the day. The day has occurred. And so it's, it shows them at 6.30 in the morning, her with the twins and Grace saying goodbye to everyone. And then... Um, Giselle is driving um, Grace to the airport and then um, her, the dad comes and like, you know, they say their goodbyes and then they go to the campus and that's that on that. And um, Giselle was fighting being emotional, but she was definitely being emotional here. Grace was too. And they just showed a lot of flashbacks of... Grace and all the girls on the show for the past, you know, eight seasons. And that is one thing that is like a, a saving grace, no pun intended, um, is that because Giselle has been on the show, she has all these memories documented now. So that is something to be very proud of. Um, whether you like Giselle or not, that's cool. So that's pretty much what happened here. Next, um, Charisse and um, Ashley visit Robin at her place. And, um, you know, Robin has a nice, um, she has some champagne there and a security board, some sushi rolls and all that for them to snack. And um, Juan, we find out that Rob, um, Juan is with the boys. So no more, no more Juan. The first like 10 episodes, I feel like Juan was like in every single episode. He must have met his quota. He's like, okay, I'm done. I did my job because <laughs> he ain't been around since. Either that or Robin got sick of him embarrassing her. I don't know. Um, but the fact that y'all still together, together, I don't know what arrangement y'all have. That's embarrassment enough. But that's all on our side note. Anyway. <laughs> And then um, Ashley, you know, says she just came from a doctor because her son Dylan had a cough. And so she's like, I just need to unwind right now. And so the libations are libating so they could do that. And um, Charisse mentioned a massage therapist came to her house and did the massages of it all. And then um, offered a vaginal massage. And I almost puked my mouth when she, she said that. I don't want to envision that. That's disgusting. Yeah. Anyway, so the ladies um, get their drinks and they recap. They basically recap um, to Charisse the trip. Um, Robin, for whatever reason, is still holding on to the fact that 
um, Vernon Davis is going to be training um, Karen. And Robin doesn't realize she sounds really stupid. <laughs> That's what kills me about Robin. She thinks she'd be doing something, be eating, and she sounds stupid. Vernon Davis is a professional athlete. Professional athletes know how to train. And a lot of them, a lot of times, because their body has been an investment for so long, a lot of them can go into personal training fairly easily because they've been doing that their whole entire life. And side note, I'm almost positive he probably has that background or else he would not be able to train her. Like, because legally, you're technically not supposed to train someone else unless you are certified. Like, because you could get into some trouble if you end up, someone ends up getting injured on your watch. Like, if you're charging them, that is. Now, if you're doing it for free 99, that's a whole nother thing. That's like basically a workout buddy. But like, if you're training someone and you're paying for their services, you can actually get in some trouble if you don't have any type of like certification. And so based off of that alone, that's all I need to know. And I, I'm, I'm speaking on that because I actually used to be a certified personal trainer, so I know that. <laughs> But anyway, neither here nor there. Um, so Charisse um, mentioned she's going to be hosting a crab boil. And she said she's going to be inviting everyone in the group. And she also is going to be inviting Jacqueline. And um, Jacqueline, Mia's friend, or not, not a friend anymore, Jacqueline. Um, and Charisse is hoping that Mia doesn't feel away and she is trying and hoping to resolve Mia and Jacqueline's issues. And that pretty much concludes that scene. Next, we see Nineka. She's getting ready. She's getting glammed up um, to get ready for this crab oil. And her and Ike are discussing the IUI journey. And um, so we find out that she already did get the process started. And if everything looks good, um, next week, then they can start the assimilation, assimilation of it all uh, to get things going. We also did find out too, similar to other culturals, uh, other cultures, um, she is concerned slightly that they, her, her, you know, the Nigerian culture might feel a way about her doing this because it's not typically the natural way is the way to go. But it's like, girl, I get you're saying that, but it's like, I, I have a tough time listening to Nineka talking about this when you already did a whole bunch of other stuff that was culturally damaging that was way worse. But, okay, anyway. But I, I see what she was trying to say, but I'm still looking, I was looking at her funny because like you weren't thinking about your culture when you did all this other stuff leading up to this. But anyway, next. So next we have um, Karen and she's getting ready to bake some cookies and we see that she actually invited Giselle over for cookies and Giselle is kind of shading her. She's like, you're making me these cookies in the tube. So basically pre pre-made cookie dough and just putting it on the <laughs> pan. Considering the fact, and then they flash back to like Giselle's background because Giselle used to be like a baker and they go back to the whole baking of it all, her baking the cookies or whatever. So she's like, you couldn't even make the cookies from scratch. So anyway, it was just light, fun, shade, and confessional. But then Giselle does bring something to her. She's like, look, I got some, um, I don't think there were supplements per se. It seemed like it was maybe some over-the-counter stuff to help with her heart plaque. And she gave that to um, um, Karen. Karen appreciated. And then Karen showed Giselle's IG regarding... Giselle kind of, you know, giving an update about Grace going to college um, from the airport and um, her being slightly emotional. So she's like, you know, I have the remedy just for that. So Karen, besides the cookies, got her some 1942 tequila. Cause we know Giselle loves her some tequila. And um, so they have some libations. And then she, you know, asks, then she asks how Giselle's really, really doing. And um, Zell's trying 
So Giselle's like, I'm doing okay. I'm doing better. She kind of brushes over it because, you know, Giselle don't like getting emotional often. And she does. So then Giselle switches up and tries to get Karen to go to Sharice's event. And Karen is having no parts of it. Karen now is, okay, we love Karen, right? But we know she'd be lying. <laughs> she'd be lying. And, one of, and so her new lie is that Ray has a really, really heavy allergen and very much allergic to crab. So therefore she cannot go to this crab oil because of Ray being so allergic to crabs. <laughs> and and we know it's a lie. We all know it's a lie. But then in the confessional, Karen does triple down in her confessional. She's like, look, I don't like Sharice, and so therefore I'm not going to anything that she does, period. You can't make me go. <laughs> so then Giselle lets um, Karen know that, well, Jacqueline's going to be there. And um, Karen's like, I don't know if that's a good thing or not because Jacqueline, because... You know, a lot of the girls, so side note, I don't think we realize this until this episode especially, but a lot of the girls continue to hang out with Jacqueline after everything happened last season. So a lot of them are still friends with Jacqueline. And so Karen is one of them. So Karen knows, along with a lot of the other ladies, knows Jacqueline's POV and knows that she ain't really messing with Mia right now at this moment. So... Karen's like, this doesn't seem like this is a good thing. And of course, Giselle with her 1942 is like, oh no, it's going to be good. Look at as evil as she can look. <laughs> just just kind of throw it out there. But anyway, so they get done talking and then... Um, they're smelling the cookies, and then Karen realizes she never did put, turn the alarm on. And so Giselle's like, what, you burning the cookies? And see. <laughs> All right, it's the day of the crab boil, and it is raining, like, ridiculously. And so the ladies are one by one getting there to the place. And as they're getting there, Charisse's son, I forgot his name, I didn't get it, but he walks the ladies with an umbrella to her place so that they don't get wet. So it's kind of, that part was kind of cute. And so Robin is there first. And Robin actually helps Sharice get set up um, for the crab boil. Um, we find out, because um, Robin asks who, who's all going to be there or who's not going to be there. And Karen is not going to attend because of, of the lie she told. And then Wendy also states she won't be there because she has an award she's getting. Um, so both of them will not be there. Um, Candace arrives next. And then Sharice, of course. Um, and so that was really awkward because for a while, Candace didn't really have any allies there for a long time based off the order of people who were showing up. And so it was really awkward because they're very, because Robin and Candace are not talking to each other, right? I like at all. Um, they're not even being cordial. They're not talking to each other. And Sharice, Char is basically taking Robin's side. And she's like, why is this happening? Why can't they just patch this up and be good? So even though Sharice is taken Robin's side for the most part, she wants them to resolve the issues and wants them to get along. Um, but then Giselle arrives next. See what I mean? Karen, <laughs> Candace still ain't got nobody to talk to. And then Jacqueline arrives next. And finally, now Candace has someone to talk to. And then Kiana arrives, and then Ashley, Nineka, looking like a clown, arrives. And why makes she look like a clown? Why is this woman wearing that sash and that Party City crown on her head? And I didn't say that. Sharice called it that, too, because she was like, girl, what? Because even she thought it was stupid. And that's... It's not often why I get along with Sharice, but why when me and Sharice are here, but child is stupid. So then Mia, um, so while Mia still hasn't arrived yet, so the ladies are kind of grilling um Jacqueline to find out what is going on with her and Mia. Are are they in a good space? Yay or nay? Um 
Giselle saying that y'all are good, um, cause Giselle said that Mia told her that they were good and Jacqueline's like, no, we're not. <laughs> and Jacqueline's proceeding to say like, she's a devil, she's evil. I have nothing to say to her right now. We're not good, we're not going to be good. And as she's saying this, then Mia arrives. She's like, hi, the party's here. Being as delusional as she always is. And side note, I've already said this before, minus the drink throwing and sometimes her pick me energy, I'm starting to really like Mia. Mia is cracking me up. She's kind of the only one I feel like who's trying to move things along. I mean, trying. <laughs> so anyway, that that is the commercial happens and then we go on to the next thing. So Mia shares that she doesn't feel a way about the girls um, still being friends with Jacqueline and reaching out, you know, to her because, you know, Jacqueline, I think deep down inside and even Mia shared earlier on the season, because I feel like Mia has always been someone strategic when it comes to her, her stories, um, whether they're true or not. She always gives us breadcrumbs. So Jacqueline has come up more than once in this season and is she's kind of made it known like she wants to patch things up um, in her own Mia way of saying it. So I really wasn't that surprised that Mia didn't take it away. So then Giselle states the obvious and literally repeats what she said, you know, when she was talking to Jacqueline. She's like, well, Mia stated that you and Jacqueline are good. But while, you know, I just talked to Jacqueline, she's saying that y'all are not good. And Mia states, well, there's some things we need to talk through and we need to talk through it one-on-one -on -one and not with, and not around the rest of you. And um, they're like, okay. And Sharice is like, say less, cool. So she actually has, um, sh um, Sharice actually brings them to another room so them two can talk and discuss things. So while she's doing this, <laughs> This part was kind of funny, um, but I could tell. Is it bad that I can tell through the screen that those that, that those crabs did not look good? So they're just like, these are not Baltimore crabs. These are like New Hampshire crabs or something. This don't taste like um, this don't take like taste like uh, crabs from here. Cause I noticed there was no butter anywhere, and I didn't see obey nowhere. I didn't see no seasonings on those crabs. I was like, where's the seasoning? That was the first thing I noticed. I know, and you can tell because, you know, Obey is like red. It has a color. So, and, you know, you put the seasonings on it. And you know how we are. We need to have some seasonings. But it was lacking seasoning. And the ladies are all shading her. Um, even her friends, like, saying, like, you know, it's lacking seasoning. And I was, like, saying, well, I mean, it's similar to, like, Sharice's personality. It's pretty on brand to me. Yeah, sometimes people be catching strays. I can't help it. But anyway, so, but then um, Naneka's like, well, the drinks are popping. She was like, okay, I'm going to go all in on these drinks, but let's make these crabs mediocre, which is a damn shame. Y'all are in that area where the crabs are the best and y'all couldn't make those crabs taste good. And then, um, Naneka states that she's not used to the crabs being so small, which she's talking about a different type of crab. I think what she was talking about was either a snow crab or, um, oh, what are those other crabs? They're really big. They're more on the West Coast. Cause you know, Naneka lived in California and stuff for a while. So they're not gonna be, they're not gonna be the same crabs. You know, it's kind of an obvious thing. But anyway, so, while this is happening, um, Ashley asks how Giselle's doing, you know, and then Giselle kind of just states small talk, like, yeah, I'm doing a lot better with the, with Grace going to college and I visit Karen and that was pretty cool. And so then Mia and Jacqueline, they're now talking in the other room and they're discussing their issues. And the issues tied to what we thought it was gonna tie to earlier on in the season. It has everything to do with what happened with Mia um, being essayed. 
and that situation. And Mia actually does own up to it and apologize to, um, you know, Jacqueline for how she all like how she treats her at times. She's like, I think I have a lot of anger and resentment because of that event. And I, I, I put so much blame on you with that. And I hate that I do that because it's not your fault. You're not the one who did that. And I think also the issue is that because we decided to keep it a secret, it's just been eating me up inside. And Jacqueline shares something that Mia didn't know. Jacqueline's like, I didn't keep it a secret. And she's like, what do you mean you didn't keep it a secret? She's like, I didn't know about, I didn't even know this happened for like the two, for until two years later. And Mia didn't know that. Mia thought that Jacqueline knew the whole time that that happened. She's like, no, I didn't know until two years later that that happened to you. And honestly, Jacqueline, you know, owns up to it. She's like, you know, that's why I let some of your crappy behavior towards me slide because I hold a lot of guilt that they even happened to you, even though, you know, it wasn't my fault. I still hold on to a lot of guilt. And whew, of everything on this episode, which was giving lackluster and boring, maybe because this story is something that I actually truly can relate to because I have a... I have a friend and I have had a similar situation and I've shared this before with um, that other, that video. Um, and I'm trying not to get teary eyed. I'm, I'm not, I actually have cat hair in my eye. I promise that's what it is. But um, I had a similar issue um, where I was Jacqueline and I had another friend who was more on the Mia side and you, you let, you, it's tricky. You carry a lot of guilt, even though you had nothing to do with what happened to them, but you always question like, well, what if I would have never invited her to come to this place? This would have never happened. Um, and similar to them, they were kids. Looking back, I was a kid. We were kids too. Like we were like, I, we were both 19 when things like this happened. Um, I'm not gonna put their business out there all the way, but yeah, it, for those who know, you know, and. It, it's, yeah, I can relate to this more than anything else because it's kind of a close to home type of thing. But anyway, so because Mia did not know that, that was a little bit more closure that she needed. So it actually helped, helped me a lot. But then Jacqueline does state like, look, I think you really do need to work on your anger and you're lashing out because that's not cool. And Mia stays like, actually, I've been going to therapy. And it seems like she really has been going to therapy to iron things out. And good for Mia. Um, I think this was a genuine scene from Mia. I don't think Mia was like BSing us. I think this was actually her being true and her authentic self. So, and this is what makes me like Mia because she's the only one to me that's bringing things different and new to the table for me on the show right now besides you know your obvious people Karen well Karen doesn't really bring anything new but she brings you know the fun um but Karen wasn't really on this episode much either like a lot of the people that I like on the show wasn't even really on the show this week so maybe that's the other reason why I thought outside of this scene you could have threw the rest of the episode away <laughs> I'll, I'll be completely honest but anyway so they um, do pretty much make up and they're gonna take baby steps to kinda, you know, get back to a good place. Um, so in the other room though, Sharice is trying to get to the bottom of the issue of Robin and Candace. Um, Candace states to the group that Robin actually shared some private text messages between them two on a podcast. And for me, this is where I can't stand you. I cannot stand you, Robin. You are such a hypocrite. You're a hypocrite. Like, you wonder why Candace feels the way she feels towards you. It's like you guys both just keep doing this stupid, immature stuff. Like, honestly, they're both getting on my damn nerves. I'll be honest, they both are. I, I'm done with both of them. <laughs> Candace is getting on my nerves because the lashing out on social media, because that's stupidly immature. Um, and then Robin doing this tit for tat thing and then but trying to play a victim. And then using 
um, buzzwords and basically kind of being a Karen and not, not the grand dame, but you know, I mean, actual term Karen. It's just like, y'all both are wrong and y'all both are acting like children and y'all are in your 30s, 40s, and 50s, or something like that. I don't know how old Robin is, and I don't care. I'm not even gonna look it up. But it's just kind of like, guys. But anyway, so Candace calls her out for being a hypocrite, and then Robin, and that's another thing too, when Robin argues, it's annoying. She she literally argues like a child. And it kind of actually makes sense to me how Robin and Juan are together. If they really are together, it makes all the sense in the world for me. It's like, wow. She's like, oh, I'm a hypocrite, I'm a hypocrite. I'm a, like, girl, learn how to argue. But I know she don't know how to argue because she knows that Candace will get her together, read her all the way down. So she does this yelling thing that she does, which is super, super annoying. And so they're literally going back and forth, forth and back, back and forth, forth and back to the point where Sharice literally pulls, she does the same thing that she did when she was in Mexico, pounds a table. She's like, it's enough, it's enough, it's enough. Like just literally spazzes out. But while, before she spazzes out, I almost forgot, in the confessional, she's still caping for Robin saying like, Candace chose social media over her friendship. And it's just kind of like, so we're going to forget about the the speaker box of it all. We're going to forget her. We're, we're going to forget that Robin totally switched sides during the reunion. We're going to forget about those things. We're going to forget all of that. It's the selective memory for me. But anyway, Cherie, she snaps and... Everyone's looking at her like she's crazy because it's like, girl, what? <laughs> Cause she just snapped and everyone's like, what is this? And so that was like, so as she's doing this, Candace is like, I'm gonna go, I cannot do this. So Candace goes to get ready to get her stuff together so she can leave. And as she's doing, as she's leaving, um, Nineka goes and follows her to console her. But she's like, I'm good, I'm done. I can't do this anymore. I'm over it, I just can't. And so Candace says her goodbyes to people personally who she actually likes in the group, which was like Mia, um, Nineka, Jacqueline, Sharice, and she's like, and everyone else that matters. I was like, oof. <laughs> she had to get her one little, she had to get her jabbing, you know. I, I, you know, petty be petty. Um, but, um, so Candace, as she's leaving though, she also makes sure she says bye to all Sharice's family. She also apologizes to Sharice for yelling at her house. She's like, she's like, I've been home trained. I, I, I know better. I knew better to do that. So that's why she's like, I gotta go. I ain't staying here for this. And so then, um, as far as them two resolving things, they need to let that go. Quit trying to make fetch happen. And both of them pretty much said it. Like, stop trying to make fetch happen. We're not gonna come together. Which means one of y'all gotta get off this show. And Robin, I want it to be you. Cause you don't bring anything to this show. Yeah, you can go. Seriously, you can go. Anyway, so Sharice, after she did the yelling, I forgot before, you know, Candace said bye to everyone. Sharice actually did go outside to cool down and then she came back inside. And then she like apologized. She goes back to the table, apologized to everyone. And the ladies are just like, <laughs> still looking at her like, you good? <laughs> but then um, the NECA states like, well, hell, hey, I talked to Jacqueline and Jacqueline and Mia are talking again. So that's positive. So they were able to bring somebody, to, some people together. And... Mia, to close this show, close this episode, she says, I really wish everyone would come together with this group because I like these hoes. I do. <laughs> and it cracked me up because honestly, the way they're at, like, I love that she said that at the end. But um, 
Yeah, I agree, Mia. The show would be a lot better if they would. But, and those who can't do that, they can leave. At this point, I don't even care I'm over it. And side note, I could have reviewed this yesterday and watched it yesterday, but I chose to leave and go somewhere else and hang out yesterday over watching this show because I, I'm, I'm over it. <laughs> I am over it. I'm gonna need y'all to, I'm gonna need this, episode, this season to wrap up and then y'all go back to the drawing board when it comes to this because what is this? But anyway, that does conclude this episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. Um, and um, yeah, the next episode does look good. So I am probably gonna make sure I'm around to review that one. Um, but anyway, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melanin Nostalgic Runner, and I will see you next time. Bye.